this is Scribbly again with another pen review and today I have something very very interesting for you a pilot pen it's the pilot custom 823 this is a pen that has traditionally always been mostly available in Japan or the US it's not very long time ago that uh, that pen also is now pretty readily available in the European market very excited about this because very many people or pen aficionados would consider the Pilot Custom A23 as one of the best or most exciting pens out there. So I'm very happy that I have this one for you today. Um, before we get it kicked off, I would like to say thank you very much to La Couronne du Comte in the Netherlands. Uh, they have a new web shop, by the way. Check it out. It's a fantastic new website uh, for sending this uh, copy of the pen over here for review. Thanks a lot to La Couronne du Comte. Um, let's have a look at that uh, package, which is actually a very, very large package. Just some white cardboard out here. Now we slide that off, place it here on the side, and out comes, uh, of course, also very large box, just black, some surface structure here, having the pilot logo on. Uh, that's about it. You open that box. I'm not gonna bore you with uh, unboxing uh, all that much, and you know, there's nothing super spectacular to it. I mean, it, it looks nice and uh, has a 70 milliliter ink bottle coming with it, black standard pilot ink in that case, which is very nice. And then you get filling instructions for what they call a type P fountain pen. Um, and I'll show you that in depth in a second. But what that is, is actually a vacuum filler. So you actually unscrew a cup at the end. Uh, there's a rod in there, you pull out uh, that will then come up, you submerge the bottle into ink, you will press down that rod, that rod will uh, then sort of like snap in place here in front, just uh, behind the section, that will create the vacuum seal and that will then suck up the ink. Uh, that's about it. So let us now look at all this live. So here we do have the pen, the Pilot Custom 823. Uh, this here is what they call the black or smoke black version. So that is like sort of like a black demonstrator fountain pen. I'll show you that also more in more detail in a bit. Uh, maybe you also already see it right here in the light, but I'm going to show that to you a little bit better with a torch in a second. Uh, this is like a translucent um, resin. Uh, I think it reminds me a little bit of the Platinum 3776 Black Diamond, which also appears to be black, but actually when you look at it up close, you will notice that it is translucent. The pen is also available in a amber, sort of like orange brownish finish, which is a little bit more transparent. And then I think there's also like a fully transparent version of this pen. This here, as a matter of fact, is just like the black or smoke black uh, version. Very lovely with this yellow gold accents right here. I think that suits the pen very, very well. I love it. It's like a fantastic yellow gold. And then as you can see, it is like a cigar shaped fountain pen, you know, more or less reminiscent of like a Sailor 1911 large or a Morblo Meisterstück or something like that. But let's cover the pen in a little bit more detail. So we just have like a rounded finial right here. We have a gold ring up here. We then have like the very sort of like uh, iconic, uh, I think iconic is the right word here, pilot clip. You find that clip also on the Custom uh, 74, for instance, on a couple of other pilot pens. This sort of like teardrop shaped uh, clip with a ball right here saying pilot up here. Very nice. I mean, this is a very, very functional clip. This ball really helps sliding the pen into a shirt pocket or in a pen pouch. We then have like a double uh, sort of like a cap band here, a smaller one and a larger one. It says like custom 823, three stars, pilot made in Japan, three stars, and then you're back at custom 823. What's very nice here uh, on this engraving is like that the letters are filled in black so it's like uh, I don't know what the filling material is but it's black looks very nice the cap sort of like flares down a little bit onto the barrel sits very snug not a lot of wiggle room here very nice tight tolerances 
we then have this like barrel here and you can see i think even in this light that there's like a metal rod in there that's that vacuum filling rod you have another cap band here or end band rather um, looks very similar in style to the cap band for a match and then as said you unscrew this a bit wet hands now you unscrew this thingy right here and you would then sort of like pull out that rod i'm not doing that right now because the pen is filled with ink and then push it back down that's how this pen fills it's a screw on cap and it unscrews with uh one yeah sort of like a one and a half or one three quarters of a turn yeah i think it's uh, safe to say that it's one and a half turns which is nice because it makes uh, for a very nice elegant and uh, quick note taker this is what the cap looks like here you see a little bit better the translucency of the material which now becomes more apparent very very nice you have an inner cap to prevent the nib from drying out which works fantastically and then here you have the pen with a nice large section very very good to find your grip on here i think um subjectively i would say and we compare it in a second it's pretty much the girth of a uh, moblo meisterstück or a pelican m600 slash m800 something like that a very very comfortable girth very comfortable size for my hands lays in hand very nicely pretty balanced i would say what i noticed in my hand is that the pen is slightly back heavy not to the point that would be disturbing but i can definitely feel a little bit of back heaviness right here uh, having that said you can for sure post the cap uh, it also does post down quite a bit onto the barrel fairly deep right here um, but uh, you know i i wouldn't post the pen because as i said i do find it slightly back heavy anyway the cap doesn't make it a lot more back heavy because it's a fairly lightweight cap but you know the gold adornments and on here they do make it a little bit more back heavy so for me i would write the pen unposted just also because it's plenty long enough without having it posted let's look at that nib this is like a really really nice large nib pilot has their own nib size numbering so in pilot terms this here is a number 15 nib which sort of translates to a number six nib in normal uh, normal nib sizes so to speak here you see a Mont Blanc Meisterstück 146 beside it and you see it's pretty much the same size just that the pilot is a little longer maybe a millimeter or so uh, here at the tip but uh, other than that, uh, I think it's fair to say that, like, you know, it's a, expect a number six size nib, just that Pilot calls it a, a number 15. It's a mono color nib, a gold nib, gold uh, only, so no, no duotone or bicolor nib. Very, very nicely. Uh, says Pilot 14K 585, 15 for that nib size, F for fine, some beautiful scroll work on here. I think Pilot has one of the most beautiful nibs out there. Uh, says down here 320, what that actually means is that that nib is made in the third month of the year 2020. So it's uh, a March 2020 made nib. Uh, another interesting detail there. Uh, down here you have like the plastic feet looks very similar to the feet of the uh, other pilot pens like the custom 74 or the heritage 92 or something like that and then you have a gold band right here and as you now can see you see that metal rod in here the barrel is translucent and you can then sort of like when you hold it up against the light you can see the ink level very well but you can also see um just uh, the ink slouching around in there, which is nice. So if I hold a torch up to the pen, uh, you can hopefully see that a little bit better even. Now here it becomes dark because that's where you still have ink in here. I see the ink coming. So I hope that uh, sort of like helps a little bit uh, for your imagination. Uh, we can do the same with the cap.
So yes, it is a translucent pen, but uh, it's not super apparent. You really, you really have to have it in bright sunlight or hold it up against the light to really, really see the translucency. Let's do a quick size comparison. So here we have it against uh, my standard size reference pen, uh, Lamy Safari. And I think kept, it's fair to say um, that uh, the Lamy Safari is probably half a centimeter shorter than the Pilot Custom 823. And without a cap, oops, they're about the same size. I would say that the Pilot is maybe two millimeters longer, something like that. Of course, the nib is a lot larger. That's what that looks like. Section comparison. So the section is quite a bit beefier just because I had this more blow here right now and because uh, quite a few people are probably familiar with the section diameter of a Mont Blanc. Let's look at that. Yeah, maybe the Mont Blanc is a tad beefier. And while we're at it, allow me to just get two more size reference pens just because I think it's helpful. Here we have a Pelican M600. I would say that that is fairly comparable. So I think it's fair to say that it's about the section girth of a Pelican M600 that you could expect. And I also have a M800 here. Let's just look at what that looks like. Yes, and so the M800 then is like slightly girthier, right? So we are, we are landing somewhere around the girth of a Pelican. M600. So now towards the end of the review, let's go with a writing sample of this uh, very nice Pilot Custom 823 with this large number 15 nib right here. So there you have it. Let's talk about it for a second. Uh, so first of all, this is like a very, very nice uh, Japanese fine nib. So it's fair to say that this is a European extra fine. It's a very, very nice smooth writing experience with a tad of feedback, but by no means like sort of like a sailorish feedback as the pilot nibs are a lot smoother. This nib also is pretty bouncy, pretty soft, but it's not as bouncy and it's not as soft as the nibs that you, for instance, find on the Pilot Custom 74 or something like that, where some people say that um, if you don't have an extremely light hand, you actually get some unwanted line variation. That's not the case with that nib right here. And you also see that right here, that wasn't the nib skipping. That was just me having a too light of a touch. And then you don't get any ink onto the paper. Same here, because I just tried to sort of demonstrate the line width with a very, very light hand. So you actually can't be too light handed. Um, then if you apply a little bit of pressure, actually, that's what I mean when I say the nib is bouncy and springy. You do get out some line variation, but of course, it's not a flex nib. And if you then press it too hard, then you get some railroading and you don't get any nib on ink onto the page again. And then, you know, if you have the right... Uh, pressure, then you just get like a, a wonderful nice line again right here. Very good. And um, it's uh, not a very wet nib, just right, just the right amount of wetness. Uh, price 335 euro for this pen. Absolutely fantastic price if you ask me. That's one of Pilot's uh, flagship pens right there. Uh, you know, if you don't consider uh, any of these uh, Urushi pens and all these special editions that Pilot does have, you then sort of 
land roundabout at the price of a Pelican M600. So I think totally fair price, totally all right price for a fantastic pen like this. Beautiful writing, large nib right here, interesting filling mechanism with the vacuum filler, nice translucency right there. That's it. Thanks again, Lacuron Ducomte in the Netherlands for sending me this pen here for review. I hope it was helpful and I see all of you at the next review. Ciao, ciao.